And I think the first thing on our agenda is minutes of the last meeting. I moved. I, I moved to accept the minutes of the last meeting. Well, we did have one comment from town staff that we should include. Um, the I, I guess the year was left off the minutes, and the oh. fact that it was done by a Zoom. Uh, those are those are things that they felt were important to include. Okay. In the, yeah, the only the only other thing I would ask that you take the H out of my name. There's okay. So what are you going to put via Zoom platform? Yeah, I'll I'll put the uh, full date and uh, via Zoom. I assume the H is in John, ah. <laughs> rather than in your last name. I'll find it and fix it, and then uh, the date. So do we have a motion with those amendments? Second. I moved. I second. Who, who was that? Marion got there first? Marian. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, how come my agenda is not coming up? Trying to operate two different computers here, so. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm looking at, too. All right. So all of our members are present. I don't believe we have any guests. Um, so we want to we jump into the facilities this study and discuss that. I mean, John, I know that you had uh, sent an email out with some comments you want to start uh, with addressing some of those comments yeah I, I looked I went through it and I saw that they had uh, picked up the uh, asbestos and the sealant around the windows but I also was looking for um, schools are required to maintain a report on all hazardous materials in the school building usually it's, it's kept by the superintendent so that anytime that any work is going on in a school uh, people would have access to that report so they know what areas they might run into if they have to fix something or repair something. So I'm looking to see if anyone has information on if that report is done. It's supposed to be updated every three years or so. But it should you call that report, John. Hmm? What do you call that report again? It's an AHERA, A H E R A. Um, it just basically lists all the hazardous materials and where they are. For instance, if there's lead paint in certain areas, if they go to tear down a wall or do some kind of work, they have to do abatement and just be careful. But there, and you know, is there asbestos on pipes? Is there asbestos in the floor tiles? That, that should be a report that surveyed the school. Um, it, and I'm not sure whether at whether Ashford has done that, I know we had to. Do yeah, that. we we have. I can tell you that we have um, a guy come in every six months, and then we do a three year, and then we do a five year asbestos report. And you're right about the tile. We've been covering it over with twelve by twelve tile, but we do have nine by nine tile with a very low end of asbestos in it. And um, as far as the rest of the building goes, there's not a whole lot of asbestos, and there's no lead paint, and um, before I worked there, I believe pipes were all taken care of. So I don't have any asbestos as any pipe wrappings or anything like that. That report we get all the time. I just had him in during Christmas vacation. He takes pictures of everything and it's a thorough report. And then we do put it in the superintendent's office. Well, we should probably see it if we're gonna make recommendations. And if we, if you go to hire someone, they, they would have to have access to it. That's, so that, that was just the first part. Um, the second part is the report goes into recommending putting in um, sprinklers everywhere. And that's, that's kind of a compound issue uh, because we're not on a city water supply. I think we, the issue is you wind up having to put in a storage tank 
You have to put in pumps. You have to put in an emergency generator to back up the pumps to feed feed a um, any kind of sprinkler system you put in. And I thought there was a report done years ago. I can't find it. Uh, I know we talked about it at some point. I'm just looking for any information. But they say that an awful lot. And sprinkling the building does a lot of it makes a lot of problems go away. Uh, but it's expensive. So I just wondering if anybody had any more information. I'm going to keep looking, but. Well, I can tell you that I was on the Board of Education when the Friar Report was created. And I believe uh, John Calarese, Mike Melody, and myself all walked the building uh, with the architect um, at the time when we discussed the report. And, you know, one of the things that you just said, John, is exactly what uh, uh, the architect from Fire said was, you know, if, if you can sprinkler this building, it makes a lot of code compliance issues go away. And part of the issue that we learned is <clears throat> that if we start applying for state funding for, uh, you know, much of the stuff that we want to do, <clears throat> there are going to be re both required code updates and required ADA updates. And uh, like I said, you know, you said the same exact words that uh, I think it was Mike from Friar Associates said was that, you know, if we can find our way to sprinkler the building, it, it does make a lot of these code compliance issues disappear. Okay. I, I know that there's a lot more information than that, truthfully. He did give us a ballpark figure at that time of probably about $1.5 million. So would we do this as, at the same time we replace the roof? Would it be... Uh, like a, um, you know, part of the um, uh, the roof replacement? I mean, would that make it? The, the, the sprinklers actually, I don't think would affect the roof at all. The roof, uh, the sprinklers actually for on this issue, the, sprink, the, the first part would be a fair amount of site work because you'd have to put in the tank, the generator and the pumps and they would be in a separate building generally because you'd have a storage tank and stuff. Like that. Then the second part would be piping the building. Uh, there, and there's stuff that keeps getting associated with it. You know, you wind up having to update your fire alarm system to pick up the flow, the flow switches and things like that. Uh, but it, there's stuff that we could break out and have done in site work that wouldn't affect the building directly. You know, site work like putting in a, the fire pump station that could be done completely outside. And then when school's not in session, you could put the pipes inside. Now that's, there's phasing that could happen. Uh, but uh, one of the things it does is, and you probably saw in the report that there's certain areas of the building are sprinklered, they have copper pipes and generally they're limited to eight, eight heads off a of domestic water supply um, where they sprinkler <coughs> certain parts of the building just because it's safer or they need to, or they have to create some other protection. But we're talking about sprinkling the whole building and it simplifies life quite a bit. A lot of your fire separations get downgraded. You don't have to have fire separation doors. There's a whole bunch of things are a lot easier. John, question with those big systems, when you have a fire or incident that sets off one of the sprinkler heads or alarms, <clears throat> Does the entire sprinkler system then go into action, or just the no. zone that's in question? No, no, they're, they're, the the thing is tied into flow switches that are segmented, so only certain sections report. And okay. actually, with the new fire alarm systems, they'll tell you which head went off, and they could make it so it reports right down to the fire department right away. So there, you know, there's things that you would get immediate notice right away. It protects the building much at a much greater level as well as people. All right, to tie in my no. follow-up question of that, with regard to the storage tank that would be required, just <coughs> how much water would it need to be? Um, I, that's why I, I know I saw something on the tank size. And I'm, because I've done so many, I'm hoping I'm not confusing it <laughs> with something else I saw. But generally, you, know, you wind up with a, like a couple thousand gallon tank, I recall, but I'm not sure of the exact situation here. Well, yes. I, can, I, I can tell you we did one uh, at the Bolton High School, which was an addition and renovation as new 
and that is a 30,000 gallon tank. Wow. Okay. I was going to say a 2,000 gallon tank doesn't give you much capacity. That's of... about two minutes. That's about two minutes of water at a really high flow rate. But uh, for a sprinkler system, that probably gives you. Uh, well, I mean, there there are specific requirements under NFPA about how much flow you have to have for a certain number of heads for a certain period of time. So you, normally, this is all calculated by a fire protection engineer who's designing the system. <clears throat> but my my experience as a building official has been, you know, th these are very large tanks. Um, the the two that I've dealt with uh, most recently have both been in Bolton. One was the high school. The other one was uh, Simonized for their main plant. And that was also 30,000 gallons of water. How, how, what is this Bolton high school size related to Ashford? I think, it, I think it's a bit bigger, but I don't know that it's remarkably bigger. Okay. Okay. I can tell you guys, I just had PNJ sprinkler in there during Christmas vacation as well to the sprinklers that I do have in the building, I got PM'd and they need to be upgraded anyways. And they're talking in, in the range of about $26,000 to upgrade the system I already have in the building. And it's just a handful of places, closets. Um, I don't know how many heads I have. I, I'd, have to, I'd have to recount, but I did make a map of where they were. And, um, you know, right now we do have a system in place that would run off my generator, um, but it's not the whole building, obviously. Right. And what size tank do you have? What was that? They're, what running size? Off, they're running it off the domestic water supply, I believe. We have and no they, tank uh, coming. And it's in, it's in storage rooms over 100 square feet, janitor's closets, and things of that nature. Yeah, do you... You can you can run up to eight heads per section of a domestic water supply without being a technically a, a fire suppression sprinkler system. They, there's exceptions to the code that allow this, but what they picked up in the report was you have to put in the full blown backflow protection, the testable backflow protection on each of those sections rather than just the stuff we have, and that those are like four hundred dollar valves that go in, things like that. And they get tested every six months. So you know, there's a high maintenance to those also. Mr. Uh, Melly, what are they telling you that you need to do to the system for $26,000? Well, some of them are heads to re be replaced and um, there's stuff that has to be replaced. If you remember, Jim, when we did um, the core room, I had to add one in the back closet that we made for- um, Right, because it was over a hundred square feet. Yeah, so we added another head there, but um, I do have a map and it's posted right before you go in into the superintendent's office on where the sprinkler heads are in the building. I mean, I used to have a closet that we made into a classroom down in um, room 29A. There's a few there, there throughout the building. There is, but it's nowhere near the whole building. Right. Like John is saying. <clears throat> Oh. If there's a report they just sent to us, you could have access to the report of what, what needs to be repaired if you if you if you really want to know. Um, then the other thing on the facility study, and I I know that there are oil fired burners. Are there buried tanks? Are there above ground tanks? Are there have they back in the 70s the EPA required <coughs> tank, ground tank to be registered? longitude and latitude and then have a lifespan on it. And I don't know if that was done or- I have a 20,000 gallon fuel tank right now that's right outside of um, the administration office that is gonna be 30 years old in the, the, um, the year to 23. And right now me and Jen are working on trying to get a 10 year extension on it. Otherwise that has to be replaced. I have- um, kitchen runs off of a, a buried tank of propane that's in the back over by my garage. And um, other than that, there's no other tanks buried. Mr. Melly, didn't we get a, an extension once on that already? No, what we've been with, doing is insurance didn't want to cover it. So I've been doing pressure tests on it for the last right. four or five years because it's getting close to its uh, capacity. Right. So right now, I mean, it's going to be 
quite a bit to replace that. And um, Jen was able to find something online where we could probably get another 10 years out of it because it is in good shape. And I, I do keep it. I've cleaned it a few times. I've had an outside company come in and clean it. And then we've put it under pressure. And um, you know, it's going to be, uh, that'll be another summer job when that, when it comes up. But um, you know, my rec recertification, my it can be done on that tank? My uh, recollection is that it's in the school's capital plan for the year 2023. For replacement, uh, I wouldn't know that. All right, let me see if I can pull that up. Yeah, it was. I, I thought I saw that too, Jim. Uh, 2023. I think it's 2023. That's, uh, uh, that's when they said it was uh, supposed to be uh, replaced. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's in the capital plan. Yeah. Yes, it says 2023. Thank you. Fuel tank upgrade or replacement. So if we can get another 10 years out of that, I think that makes sense. Yeah, there's a question form we're, we're working on right now, filling out and trying to um, trying to get an extension on it. Mm -hmm. would, would be really nice. One right. I, I think, I think you're, you're going to be hard pressed to get it accomplished in 2023. Just by the time everything gets done and all the other stuff. Just scheduling wise. Are you talking about the recertification or the new tank? <clears throat> um, well, I would say replacement of the tank. I, at some point, they just don't re, they don't keep extending it. This is a steel tank, fiberglass. No, it's fiberglass. It's an Onan corn. It's fiberglass tank, okay. and it's encased in. Um, it's encased in concrete. That's going to be fun to take out. Oh yeah, it's going to be something. I mean, you're going to have a company take it out. You have a company put it back in, and um, it's going to be very expensive. I'll rip up the whole parking lot. Will Willington just did fuel tanks at uh, at the Hall School. I can find out what that cost. Yeah, try to find out because I know it's going to be hundreds of thousands. I don't, I don't, I don't think it was that much. I, I want to say removing the tank and replacing the tank was like 30,000. Really? Well, they, they now require you to replace all the piping too, I believe. Yep. All the piping was replaced as well. It was a really short run from the tank, you know, into the building, into the boiler room. But It's the same with our situation. It's right outside the boiler room and it's okay. It's not it's in, far. It's in the back there. No, well, it's, it's in. It's by the superintendent office by primary, right outside. Okay. Is there any way we can uh, do anything about um, doing something more clean energy than oil? I mean, if we're going to go to bond and. Oh, I mean, I, you could look at the geothermal too. That doesn't eliminate it, but it reduces the uh, the amount of energy you need. And it gains you air conditioning. Right. And, uh, you know, we were also talking about mini splits in some of the rooms. So, um, you know, Stafford Springs went to 100% clean energy, I think with geothermal and solar. A brand new building. Well, not all their buildings are brand new. Well, you'd be you'd, you'd be looking at upgrading your insulation substantially, upgrading the um, the airflow in the building, which that's going to be an issue anyway for <laughs> considering where we are with uh, COVID and stuff. I um, think the, I think one of the difficult parts about you know I think in some ways geothermal is a great idea. Um, I think one of the difficulties we, we would run into is where do we put all of the air handling units for the geothermal? You know, is, is the roof capable of handling the load? Does it need beef up? There's, there's no room inside the building for these air handling units. How many wells would it take for that size system? Well, the only thing I have to compare it to is the Bolton High School which was uh, also, again, an added to and renovated as new 
And I want to say there's like 26 wells off the top of my head. And in each, in each classroom, there is a closet with an air handling unit. You don't have to have an air handling unit for each space, but that does give you individual control. Which isn't all bad because if you can have outside air right in each classroom, that helps a lot. In, Absolutely. In these conditions, that helps incredibly. Well, and it works as an economizer too, so that you're not trying to cool the space when you've got outdoor ambient temperatures that are cooler than your indoor temperature. Yeah, you can, you, well, and that's that gets into the discussion, do you want to still have operable windows? Because um, when it's perfect weather outside, you, you can open the windows into classrooms. Some schools say yes, some say no. That It's always, uh, you know. But don't you need windows for egress also? Not with the sprinkler system. <laughs> Yeah, that's the egress <laughs> window requirement goes away. It's, it's it's all interrelated. It's all interrelated. It's it's like, you know, you push here and you get a push back here. And it's so our windows are definitely another problem. You know, yeah, you, they're they're shot single paid windows throughout the building, and uh, we are really just burning fuel. Yeah. Well, we definitely need to put put the new windows and the. Uh, everything else if we're going to do the roof and all that. So I, I would say you're doing the window wall. The It's like a storefront window wall system was not only the framing, the glass and the energy panels all associated. Um, if you start going to individual like fan coil units or stuff related, you would just build those into the into the wall system. So they could pull 100% outside air at each classroom. So you can coordinate it and do everything at the same time. Uh, I'm just yes. trying to draw a line about, you know, where do we go first? The first part is make sure we have all the environmentals together so we know what to do and then start looking at, you know, I think if we try to, I don't know, that maybe everyone else has an idea, but I don't know how you do the in a complete building makeover. I think you were we're going to be stuck doing it in sections. Yes, you really can't close the school. You know, you have to stay in operation, which means you're doing an awful lot of summer work or you're doing a lot of prep work that you can do outside that doesn't affect the students. And then you have that two two month or three month window in the summer to do a lot of work that would affect the students when they're not there. You've got eight weeks in the summer and a lot of vacations. If you can do something in a week while, uh, you know, in Christmas vacation, obviously it's cold. It's not a, the time to change windows, but there are various vacations and uh, long weekends, but you're right. It's, it's hard to um, try to accomplish everything. How many students do we have in the school? We have about 400. Is that an increasing number or decreasing? Well, it was increasing before COVID, but now it's decreasing because of COVID. It's been pretty stable though for the last several years, as I recall. So it's not like Mansfield or some of the surrounding towns that are decreasing rapidly. No, I mean- It had been, it had been a decline up until a number of years ago, right Jim? And then it stabilized right around 400. It stabilized right around 400 for the last several years. And now we have less because of the because of COVID. There and there's a lot of kids staying at home, you know, also because of that. Just think what you could save if we could get the kids to all stay home. <laughs> 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 well, with, with all due respect to the committee members I've sat with before <clears throat> on these type of meetings, this is all stuff that get we keep rehashing and rehashing and rehashing. And to John's point, and I think to the bigger picture and objective here. Shouldn't we come up with a, a, a plan that's really concrete with regard to what logically makes sense sequentially, what's going to be the best value in terms of dollars spent that works with the timing that Mike references and kind of combine that all into a kind of master plan? Yes. Because we can all talk about the wish list items we want. We can all talk about how 
something has to be replaced or the windows are junk, but it's not really getting us anywhere, folks. And, and I, just, I just assume I have some forward progress. So it seems like the roof repair should be the primary thing at this point. As, lo as long as it ties into a bigger plan and, the, and it's the right piece at the right time. All right. So yep. I think we need windows and roof and, you know, um, solar and because solar has to be done at the same time as the roof. And then if we're going to, I mean, all of this stuff can be, um, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not completely familiar with everything, but uh, John, I mean, if you can come up with a, how we should sequentially do this, I think we really do need to think about what exactly we want at the end of this. Well, first of all, Marion, you got to qualify. There's two Johns. There's the good looking one and then there's me. <laughs> <laughs> Either John, any John. But John is the architect. I mean, the other John is the architect, right? I defer, I defer to the good-looking John as the architect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think we're looking at two different things. We're looking at the building shell, which is the roof, the windows. Um, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to do the windows unless we have an idea of what we would be doing with the mechanical system. You know, if we need that, if we're going to have fan coil units or units in the classrooms that tie into the outside windows, we should know that ahead of time. So there's some building shell issues. Uh, the roof. Would sprinkler not, system be tied to the shell or the interiors? Well, we're not changing the program of the school, are we? Are there any program areas that have needed changes like an extra classroom or no. like that? No, I don't think so. So we're so in terms of the program, the, the floor plate is okay. Would you say or yes? I would say with the exception of the fact that we are uh, grossly out of compliance with many ADA requirements. Yeah, I saw that. Which we're going to be sued over at some point. Are we talking about the what you're specifically you're talking about the the interior environment. It's yeah. all it's the yeah, it's the way the the way the state does it, it they use what's called federal 504. It's when the, the feds give the state money, they enforce the ADA through the 504 standards, which is basically it, it's similar to ADA, it's just slightly a little bit different, but they say you're not going to get funded unless you address all the issues. Um, the water fountains, the bathrooms, uh, the f general facilities, the entry, all that kind of stuff. Um, well, in the in interior handicap ramps, walkways, the, uh, I, the interior right. ramp walkways are way beyond uh, what's acceptable for slope. I, I agree. I, I just can't. Uh, on, I looked at very carefully the ADA uh, specifications, and that that ramp that goes down. Uh, to the cafeteria, it said it was eight feet, and they want a 30-inch um, ball. I don't know how the hell you can do that. I really don't, without major uh, costs. And then, of course, they also specified all the uh, walkways around the outside of the building, uh, which were ADA non-compliant. And I'm saying, wow, that, that, that's crazy. I mean, uh, that's, that's a major, major job. It is. At what point do we build a new school? Well, I guess that was my next question. Can some of these things be grandfathered in as as good as uh, as good as is, or no? It, well, part of it is sometimes you can leave ramps alone, but it has to do with program accessibility. And schools don't like to divide up their schools into um, accessible areas and non-accessible areas. The, they don't like to divide programs. They like to have the full school available. I know that they have that discussion about whether an elevator would work. Um, the ramps, that's, a, that's an old, that's been around for forever. There's, they used to build them at, uh, you know, one and eight rather than one and 12. Um, so now we're kind of stuck with it. Uh, it's almost like we would have to have come up with a, a preliminary design 
you know, I, I know Fryer did a costing, but it's really not a design. It's just a, these are the issues. Um, you'd almost have to come up with a preliminary design and say, this is what you can do and how much it'll cost and start getting to real numbers rather than just budget numbers. Um, Well, and to that point, do you want to go putting a new roof on and changing windows if that kind of major reconstruction has to be done first? Because sequentially, it would make sense to do that before, wouldn't it? Well, I think the roof makes sense just because it's deteriorating pretty rapidly and it's causing inside damage. The window walls or the windows and that's outside siding I would like to have an idea of what's going to go back before you take it off. Now, are we talking, are we saying here that we would put in something, you're, you're wanting to know whether we would do um, something like uh, mini splits in the classroom or um, whether we would be doing geothermal or what? What? Well, the, the geothermal would actually, it, you drill the wells and you're, you're just pumping, you're heat pumping basically and getting either cold water or hot water and then you're feeding it throughout the building. So if you're if you put um, fan, what's called fan coil unit, the mini splits actually each of them has their own compressor. So yeah. the mini split you put in, you have an outside compressor. A fan coil unit actually would sit generally next to the window wall and you would run hot or hot and cold water to it so that when you need hot air, it draws the air directly over coils and it um, heats the classroom but you're distributing hot water or cold water from a central pump area, which would be your boiler room. Mm -hmm. so, so when you do uh, geothermal, you're actually collecting the water. You know, at one point you're pumping down and you're taking the 50 degree water out of the ground and you're either boosting it up to be hot water or cooling it down or using the cool, cold water in your, um, your it system. It's, it's, it's similar to rather than collecting solar, you're collecting the, the heat out of the ground and using it. Where solar collects the heat from the sun, geothermal collects the heat as steep in the ground. So it's- If we went with geothermal, Mary, I don't think we'd need mini splits. Correct. Right, well, that's what I'm asking. Would we wanna decide whether we wanna use one or the other or before, I mean, I guess, what I'm asking is, is that what we need to know before we decide what we're going to do about the window wall? One would be a Band-Aid, one would be a permanent solution, so. Yeah, the, well, I think if you're doing geothermal or geothermal and solar, you need to have a design in place and you need to cost it out because you have to participate, you have to really get participation. You have to go get the, you know, dollars from Eversource. You have to get dollars from the, the states and the feds um, to support the programs because they're pretty expensive on initial installation. Uh, and if, if you are gonna do it, then you have to repipe it inside the building. So I, the last thing I would do is wanna finish the, the inside of the building and then come back and tear out the finishes and run piping. Well, That's you can't, if, if you're gonna do, if we're gonna do the roof and we're gonna do solar, it has, it has to be done at the same time. Well, solar, solar and the roof, I see them as independent projects. The roof has to be done before the solar, but the solar doesn't have to be done at the same time as the roof. Well, you have right. to, uh, this, the state requires you to do the uh, cost, I guess, at the same time. I mean, you have to say that you're going to do solar at the same time you're going to do the roof. I've never heard that the state's requiring schools to do solar. Basically. No, they don't require the schools to do solar, but if you're going to do solar, you have to say that you're going to do it when you do the roof. I mean, that's what they found out at the high school at E.O. Smith. I mean, they, you, you know. Well, E.O. E. Smith was, uh, that roof was ready to be replaced uh, totally. And then uh, that was just an add-on, I believe. Yes, but they, they it was, what, what had happened, though, was when they didn't, um, when they, they didn't don't... ask for the solar, when they asked for the roof, they had to go back very quickly and get the solar approved like immediately because the state requires you to have both of those at the same time. 
for some reason. I mean, when you're doing the bonding, I guess. I don't know exactly what the well, deal was, but. It, it might be that the, to get the structure to support the solar on the roof, you have to come through the roof. Yeah, That's I correct. Would, I would bet it's time, at but... some point you have to go through the roof and what they don't want you to do is put a, a brand new roof on and then come back and cut in and put a bunch the of- the Yeah, that makes sense. So you would, that is correct. So you would need a preliminary design for where the supports would come through the roof and design that into the roof system. And then you could add the solar later, as long as- But that structure would have to be incorporated with the roof. That's right. Yeah, the, the supports would have- they, That's the, what they did at EO Smith too. Yeah. My, they put the roof on my, and then they put the solar on, but uh, you know- it, Well, the, the problem was that people used to just lay the solar on top of a roof and that's not structurally sound. I mean, you have, you have wind uplift and things like that, that apply to commercial buildings. So the solar has to be as supported as any other device on the building, which means it ties back to structure. But we could, we could have them design a, a, a post system that the solar can be put on after the fact, mm -hmm. as long as we want it, as long as we're willing to say we're gonna go in that direction. I think we really want to do that because I think the town members are really um, in favor of it. Okay. Um, we could also put solar somewhere else other than a roof. There's other ways of putting panels up. And, um, we thought, yeah, we do we know? Do we know if any engineering has been done to determine if the roof can handle the load of a solar array? I think when I was reading through this. <clears throat> something that I can't remember now what, but somebody sent us something saying that part of the roof could handle the solar and part of the roof couldn't. Seemed like. Probably the, probably the newer building, which is steel frame. I'm not sure about the composite roof deck, but it, it would have to go back to the, the structural frame. They don't like to see you put anything just directly on the metal deck because, but I, I'll have to look at that in a little more detail, but um. Well, to Mike Melody's point, where, Mike, on the property could we put standalone towers, if you want to call them? Well, we had designed previously the Ashford Clean Energy Task Force uh, had something planned out where they were going to do um, solar on the, um, you know, on the parking lot as, a, uh, you know, kind of like a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a shelter, like a snow shelter. Yes. <laughs> like at the Buckland Mall. Yeah, like Buckland Mall. Yeah. So that was completely planned out before. Before that's been completely planned out beforehand. So I mean, if we didn't want, and to that wouldn't require anything on the roof at all. How much was that rebated, Marion? Well, that was actually going to be. Um, see, that was before my time, actually, uh, before I was even on the Asher Clean Energy Task Force, and it was before I was for, on the Board of Ed. But I think it was going to be almost uh, like uh, free, and somehow the board of ed decided not to do it. So when I was on the board of ed education, we were approached about putting a, a solar rate on the roof of the school, and the board of education, I think, in their wisdom at that time, voted not to put a solar array on the roof of the school until such time as the school roof was replaced because we were already experiencing significant issues with the roof. Okay. I, I, in my time, my eight years on the board, I never once saw, saw or heard about a plan for independent structural solar array in the field. Okay, I'll see if I can find that plan where that was, because I think I remember seeing it, but uh, you know, it's been a while ago, so. But there was a, plan as I remember there where there was going to be these uh, structures out out on the parking lot and, and they have the, those and they have those by the way on several uh, parking lots in East Hartford schools so they also have it at the police station over in was it Columbia or over by um yeah they're, they're, they're everywhere at this point my, my question I guess is what would our goal be with regard to um capacity uh, versus our current bill. How, how much do we want to try to save? Want to save all of it. 
<laughs> Again, wish list, Marion, or one thing. What's the reality of this? Is it 50% typically, guys, that you're in the know? So one of the things uh, that I'd be concerned about, and I think we need some more information uh, before we make that kind of a recommendation, the, the fire department itself was slated to have a full solar array on that south-facing roof. The problem was that the electrical infrastructure on the street could not handle putting that back into the grid. And that was going to require an additional upgrade of a um, another transformer of a transformer to the tune of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars that the town was going to have to pay for. The school and the fire department are on the same line, so okay. I, I don't know if there's a significant difference there. I I don't know if there's additional cost beyond just whatever it's going to cost to put a solar array in. And that would be something I think would be important for, you know, somebody to vet out before this committee. I, look, we can make a recommendation to put solar on, you know, to the extent possible. But at some point, you know, the town or the board of finance and the board of selectmen are going to have to make decisions based on dollars and cents. And, you know, they're relying on this committee to make recommendations as to what we think is sensible. Um, well, I did talk to um, uh, okay, a company that was recommended to me by um, the people that came out and did the energy audit on my house. And they said they that particular company couldn't really do, they don't really do uh, like commercial, but they gave me the name of a commercial company and I went and talked, I mean, I contacted them and told them that we were interested in looking for solar on the uh, on the school building. But now, of course, it's been several weeks ago and I'm, you know, over 70 years old, so I can't remember exactly what they told me. <laughs> um, I think they needed a little more information from me and I wasn't sure where we were going, so I didn't, um, uh, get the full thing on it, but I can, I'll contact them again and see if they can give me some kind of estimate. Is that what you'd like for me to do? Sure. Well, I mean, I think we need to have some ideas about what it's going to cost. And is it feasible to tie that into the electrical system that's currently uh, on the street, you know, maintained by Eversource? Mm -hmm. Now, have okay. we have, has the school participated in the uh, Eversource uh, lighting load reduction program at all? Yes. yes, twice. Twice at least that I'm aware of, right, Mike? Yes. So we put in T8s and T12s and stuff like that. We didn't go to the LED part, did we? we we've done well, I'm doing both. LED right now as you speak. Okay, so your electrical load should be going down substantially if you're putting in LEDs. Yeah, but the problem is in my budget, I can only get like a hundred at a time. So every six months, if I get a hundred bulbs, I've got over 2000 bulbs in the school. So if I had a grant and I could do it all at once, yeah, it would go down, you know? And right now there's no, and um, I was getting them for three bucks a piece, but right now they're seven bucks a piece because they want to sell you the fixtures. So I don't have that option of buying them real cheap anymore. So you know but there the was something about the the fixtures you know when we had that whole discussion several years ago about the fixtures them being better fixtures and all that sort of thing what, what was the well, what they've done is that instead of four bulbs you have two bulbs in there now and that, that's what they changed over that's what eversource did to us a couple of times what jim's talking about but right now i can just swap out bulbs but I, I just don't have the money to buy all the bulbs. You know, Mike, if you could do me a favor and send me the the sizes and the style bulbs you need, I've got a friend that's in that business that works for a manufacturer, and uh, maybe I can call on a favor. Yeah, right now I go through my electrician, um, and he's been getting me the deals. Whenever there's a deal, he'll call me, and I'll see what I have in my budget, and I grab as many as I can. And I'm pretty much done with all the smaller fixtures. I have different types of bulbs in there, like. In a gym, I have T5s. Everywhere else, I have T8s. 
And um, I have some small T8s in the hallway that I just did Christmas vacation. That Again, were... send me the list and what you'd need for quantities, and I'll see what I can do for pricing for you, okay? As just All right. All right. All right. Very good. Well, I'm going so we... to try, I'm try to... Job. I'm trying to get a sense of a timeline. I actually think this is going to wind up being a couple year plan. And quite honestly, I, I think you, we want to try to get the roof done. <coughs> uh, not this summer, but the summer, the uh, spring summer after get everything all set because I, I don't think you're going to go too many more years with that roof. Right. We I, I don't, I don't think we possible. should. And I'm just looking at by the time you, we hire we hire a consultant, we get every, the specs all done, all the stuff added to it. That's that's the time frame we're going to be looking at. I just unless someone think I don't think we're getting anything done this summer, quite honestly. No, I mean it seems to me like right now we should focus on you know the the roof and deciding what may or may not happen with solar. Um, and that could potentially be one project. And then, you know, some of these other things could be in a, in a different package, you know, down the road. Yeah. Well, don't we don't want to do the windows and the roof at the same time? Because those windows have been, I mean, they've been on our, you know, ever since I've been on the board, it's like we well, need windows replaced. I will tell you that by replacing the roof, you're going to save more energy than you will by replacing the windows because one of the things that will happen with the replacement of the roof is that you'll have to comply with the current energy code insulation value on the roof and that'll be a continuous insulation blanket that happens over the entire surface of the roof you'll also eliminate the problems of the noise in the classrooms in the media center when it rains yeah, all, of those, all of those issues will go away with the replacement of the roof you will save far more energy on a roof than you will on the walls. It just, that's. Well, I, I agree with that, but I'm just wondering if we shouldn't try to do, I mean, should we try to do both of those things at the same time? If we're going to go to bond, shouldn't we try to bond in as much as possible? I, I wouldn't do the windows unless you know what your mechanical system is going to be doing. Because I think, I just recall the building being very low with not a lot of headroom to run mechanicals and duct work. So I, I think you're going to be dealing with classroom units. And if the classroom units, if the mechanical units have to be integrated with the window wall system, I'd like to know that what we're putting in can handle the, the HVAC unit. That's, you know, that's, and I don't think, I don't think we're at a point where we know what the mechanical stuff is going to be like yet. I so that, that can that could be like in smaller projects because I have primary that windows have to be replaced facing a parking lot. So if you did classrooms odd numbers one through eleven to start with, then you're you're killing two birds with one stone. You're upgrading your heating system through those classrooms and you're replacing those single pane windows, and then. 21 through 25 is the other place I have single play windows. So if we could break it down and do parts of the building, at least we're doing something because I've been talking about replacing those windows for 17 years myself. It's been a long time and, you know, I don't know. I think so. Even if we come up with a price and a game plan, it doesn't have to be the whole school at once. It would, you know, we would be saving money as we go, just like I'm saving as I'm changing light bulbs. Do you want to do you want to try to do that this summer then one one side of the building? If we're not going to do the roof this summer, we we could wait and do the roof and then uh, I mean wait, wait and do the roof next year next summer, but do well, the we windows. Still have to put figures on everything. We have to put everything out to bid. We have to have solid numbers. I mean, it'd be nice to do whatever we could for the school, but I think we have to do it realistically and come up. Well, with and, and I think you know John Talgo's made the point that. You know, these things are tied to each other. They're sequential, you know, and I, th I think that, you know, the question here is how, how can we plan a window replacement if we're also talking about upgrading the mechanical system and we don't know what we're going to do with a mechanical system? Um, so how do we decide that? 
I, I think we know we can hire we can hire a consultant to design the roof replacement. I mean that we can do that and make sure that that gets done. Whether we have the same person because it's different, it's basically different responsibilities. If you're going to be doing the mechanical system, you're going to have to have an HVAC and an architect and an HVAC engineer. If you're doing the roof, it's really you're going to wind up with a structural engineer who's going to make sure your structure is okay, but it's going to be designed by an architect who's really certified in roof work, you know, and actually it could be, could be a roof designer, but generally it's done by architects because they, they handle all parts of the building. Um, I just think it's going to take a little longer. I know if you try to do windows piecemeal, it'll cost you about three times as much because one of the things that, and we did whole buildings in Hartford. Um, we would do replace the entire window wall system in the summer, but that way you got a bigger um, window wall guy who could actually do the abatement, the removal, and the replacement. You didn't have to bring in multiple contractors. A lot of the window guys are certified to do the asbestos abatement when it's related to caulking. And the state has the prohibitions. You can't do any abatement while school's in session. That's unless you get a special approval from the Department of Health. And I can tell you when we took out windows that had caulking that had asbestos in it, we had to protect the whole inside of every classroom where we were taking the windows out. You know, and the glass had to be wrapped, the, the frames had to be wrapped, they had to be put in a special dumpster that went to a special landfill because it was all considered to be contaminated. Um, so is it those windows that have asbestos? It's the caulking has the asbestos. Right, but I mean, I, I got that, but I mean, is it those single pane windows that have the asbestos? Yeah, it was, it yeah. was, spread, it was spread throughout actually. It's a lot of areas. It's, um, I'll go, I'll, I'll try to mark up and see exactly where, but you know, primary has it. So, so what's our next step? My, my question is, what is our next step? What do we need to be doing? Let's make this plan and get it done. Right. Well, I, I, I guess, do we want to make a suggestion that we look at sprinkling the building, the whole building? Yes, I think that's a good idea. I think it's going to have a cost, but I also think in the long term, it's a better idea for the school and for maintenance and for operations and, you know. And, and for code compliance in the sense yeah. that the projects would fall nicely behind that, right? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, that could be a recommend. First, my, my first recommendation is we, we, be we do the preparation we, we have to do to make mm -hmm. sure it's done the summer from now, or you know, as soon as school breaks, because it's going to be—you can't have the kids in the school when you're doing roof work. It just the noise is just unbelievable. <laughs> um, I don't uh, think we're going to get. We had a projected date of 2023 for the roof. Right, but we have to start designing. Understood. Understood. And so, I think we—you know—that's. I think you shoot for 2020, the summer of 2023 to do the roof. Well, and that's... The, the sprinklers could be a separate independent project. Do we want to put a target date on that as well? Or for now, just research? I break? think we start, I think we start costing at looking at what the costs are, you know, and then see if we can find other money, you know, find other monies. Um, Well, no, if we do the sprinkler system, we're going to have to upgrade the fire alarm system at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. Upgrading the fire alarm system, my, my guys um, gave me a price and it's good for a year. To upgrade what I have in the building now would be 46 grand. And that's not tying in a bunch of sprinklers to it either. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I at, at this point, if you put in a sprinkler system, I would almost say that your fire alarm system is going to be changed out entirely to be a fully digital system. I mean, it's a, a fully digital reporting system that um, every point is intelligent. Every point can report back. It's 
and it unifies the whole system because I think you're dealing with three add-ons. It's a unified system, but I, at this point, you know, to try to extend a system that's that old with a new sprinkler system, because you're gonna have flow switches and everything. Right. So are we talking about a sprinkler system, a sprinkler system and fire alarm, sprinkler and fire alarm system for this summer? We're no, gonna... I'm just gonna research costs, Mary. Okay, but what I'm saying is, we, we definitely need to do that because we're if we're gonna do this on our um, capital project, we're going this summer, 2021. Uh, you're not going. You're not going to get anything done this summer. I think you're going to start planning, and we're 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 going to come back with recommendations to start costing out and coming up with costs and making recommendations. But I think the hard cost is going to be getting the roof done for 2022. I I think that you know I think what the capital expenditure will be for next year is hiring design professionals to put. Okay. Our recommendations down on paper, including bid specs, so that these things can go out to bid. Okay. Yep. So, so I think that's going to be our recommendation for, for the capital committee for this year. Okay. So, so what we really need to do is come up with a list of things that we want to see done or we think are a good idea, recommendations to the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, and the Board of Education that we believe these are the items that, you know, are the most immediate need and should be addressed. And, and, and you know, it's gonna be up to them to figure out, um, you know, the bonding of how they're gonna do it. Are they gonna do it <clears throat> as one large project or are they gonna do it as a couple of different independent projects? And, you know, I, I know that, you know, the mindset of the Board of Finance is gonna, you know, be that they're gonna to wanna to take advantage of every bit of state and federal money that's available to help offset the cost to the taxpayers. Okay, so um, I'm going to be, I'll be talking about this with the Board of Education as well. So, um, so hiring de design specs for, for the facility uh, for 2021 would be our capital project. And, and we're looking at sprinklers we're looking at sprinklers and fire alarms. We're looking at um, the roof. The roof. Yep. <clears throat> on solar. We're looking Geo at geothermal, which includes HVAC um, and um, possibly uh, mini splits and or. If you go geothermal, you don't need many geothermal. Splits. Right. If we go if we geothermal, we don't we need what? Need, we could mini eliminate splits in the oil. What's that? We don't, need, we don't need mini splits or oil. We could eliminate the oil tank as well. Yeah. We could eliminate the oil tank, the boilers. Well, you need you need the boilers, or for hot water, could we just go with those um, hybrid no, systems? Too? We can. We could use propane or some other. Okay. One of the suggestions before is because we use such little. <clears throat> such small amounts of hot water is we could use heat pump electric water heaters rather than the geothermal? resistance element that we have now. I just got a heat pump water heater. I love it. <laughs> I've had one for a couple of years and I'll, I'll, I'll chime in with uh, Marion. It's been a big cost there. But it's the Good. Aliens. And, they, and they have the added bonus of dehumidifying the area that they're in and the yes. cellar that perfect fit in my house but uh couldn't you if you went with heat pumps you'd use the geothermal system in place to help with that wouldn't you you could create hot water with the geothermal system yes. so that that geothermal system would really hit a lot of buttons i i don't disagree it would but, save uh, yeah, a lot of bucks did you say or would cost a lot of bucks it Both. Would all the buttons we need to address but it's going to cost some money <laughs> 27 wells is a lot of wells. Okay. So again, that, again, that would have to be designed based on a lot of different factors, but um, how deep like that it, it eliminates a lot of issues uh, based on topography. What's that, John? 
Typically, how deep do you have to go to get that sweet spot for the geothermal? 300 feet? I, I don't remember any of the wells being that deep. Okay, I'm, just, um, I'm, I'm speculating. I don't know for sure. That's why I'm asking. But they all have to be it, pretty much in the same area, right? Yeah, they, they were all in a specific area. Um, <clears throat> kind of grouped together, maybe 50 feet apart or something. I mean, it took up some real estate, but Ashford School definitely has the space for it. Um, I don't, I don't see that as being a huge issue. And you know, when they're done, they don't stick up above ground or anything else. It just looks yeah. like. Oh, sorry. So, who, who would be? Uh, do you know who would be who we would hire for this to do these designs? Well, if you were looking uh, for a design for a geothermal heating system. You know, you, you would hire a mechanical engineer that would do that sort of thing. There's probably firms that specialize in it. Okay. My suspicion would be there's grant money for that type of thing also, question mark? I, I don't know. I, I, think it, I think what happens is that the town has to expend the capital outlay for the initial design and bid specs, but if they're successfully awarded the, uh, you know, if, if they end up getting the grant money from the state, you know, you get reimbursed for a, at least a portion of that. I think Ashford's reimbursement rate is like 67%, but it's something smaller than that because the building is, the square footage of the building is larger than we need for the number of students that we have. So that 67% gets kicked down to something somewhat less. But my rec my recollection is that it wasn't a lot less than the 67%. And yeah. that whole based on the, uh, the number of free and reduced lunches that we get. Yeah. I think what happens is we, we're gonna need to hire a consultant. Um, it's gonna be an architect that or you know, that's going to have to prepare plans and specs and hire other subconsultants uh, for the very simple reason that all this has to go through the state. You have to make a package submission to the state. Um, generally, if you do a roof, you can get the roof through faster than you can get entire projects through. There's a, you know, the state takes a long time to review stuff. Now you're going to have plans and specs and then you submit it and the state comes back and tells you, you know, you need to change this and that and this and that. Um, but well, I, think, I think at EO Smith, they got their roof. I mean, they got their roof uh, approval pretty fast, but right. uh, I right. they, here. They, they, the roofs go through really quickly. The general construction projects don't because the, the thing that they actually look at the most is the, um, the uh, fire safety, the ADA, the 504, <laughs> very, very closely. Okay, uh, well, you know, one of the things is we've talked to the folks at Stafford Springs and at Woodstock, they both went 100% clean energy. I could talk to them about who they used mm -hmm. for their schools. Well, I don't think our job is to recommend design professionals. I think our job is to recommend projects yeah. and, that, and that the town, uh, you know, potentially hires a design professional firm to uh, put, put this stuff together in a, a package for plans and bid specs. Okay. Yeah, you, usually we make a recommendation of what projects should be in and the town should put out an RFQ for qualified design professionals. Mm -hmm. That have been pre-approved by the state, right? And then once they're selected and the negotiated, and then the fees are awarded, uh, they do the work. And they, um, but I'm just looking at the the estimate that Fryer had put out. They were looking at, yeah, you know, they were looking at costs being spread out over 2025, 20, and that goes back to 2019. So they were dividing it into multi-year multi-year projects. 
Quick, quick question before we get too far away from it, but Jim or John, do you have any feedback on what what's what's the payback on geothermal systems? I think each design is a bit independent. You know, and I, th I think, you know, for the reasons that we talked about uh, when John T wasn't here, which was, you know, if we do geothermal, you know, we eliminate replacing boilers, we eliminate the oil tank, you know, that may push the payback for a geothermal system at Ashford School, you know, a little closer than, you know, than further down the road because you eliminate those other issues. Generally, it winds up being 15 to 20 years. That's, you know, that's, but a lot of that is designed for price point, you know, when they sell to people. Mm -hmm. um, so it could come in less. It could. Um, but I think the other part that you need to look at is, you know, what, what, if, if we can get, if we can do it and then not do an oil tank replacement, you know, you have boiler, boiler burners replaced, the boilers have burners that have to be replaced or service. Well, that so, was the Jim Rupert point with that, that would knock off all those extra pieces of, of cost. Well, the other part would be if you do the roof and you get significant energy savings on the roof, your, you know, your cost goes down to start with. So you don't need as big a mechanical system and really at the time that these buildings were designed, they um, the energy calculations were very broad. Very, you know, they're actually generally oversized. Yes. Now, now they would run a hybrid uh, DOE two evaluation program on the building shell, and they could tell you how much energy you're going to use and lose, and your, the your design is much much closer to your actual needs so you know by improving the shell we can save a lot of money and actually downsize my guess is we would be downsizing the uh the hvac system requirements all right so the first step is the roof yeah, I, simultaneously looking at solar and then working our way towards a geothermal quote i guess yes yeah I, You know whether it would be wells or trenches, but I, you know, quite honestly, that's free energy, and the mechanical systems are becoming much, much more efficient. You know. I, well, I think this is what I'm going to bring to the board of ed tomorrow night. That we want to hire a consultant to design the specs for the facility. Um, and to look at sprinklers and fire alarms, roof and solar, mechanical, HVAC, uh, possibly mini splits or geothermal, and then heat pump water heaters. Does, does everyone have a copy of the uh, spreadsheet that was done by Fryer for the costs? I don't think I have that. I do. Yep. Where pretty, out, pretty outdated. Well, no, I, I well, in, but in terms of going down a checklist of what we would want a consultant to do, this would be a checklist, and we might add to it, we might modify it. But um, if you're looking to hire a consultant, you put out what you put out an RFQ, um, your request for qual qualifications, and then you say this is the work that we're looking at. Um, and then we need to look at, you know, would we and part, we probably should be talking to the the board of finance on what they are looking for expenditures on a per year basis for the next five years. So is this all going to be one big project, or is it going to be a series of five projects? I mean, part of it is you know this is what our you know our cost parameters. I know we were retiring some capital projects, and there was funding available, but I'd like to know what they want us to work in, and then have us make the recommendations based on what their budgeting is for the capital program. I think that capital program found money would probably go towards the hiring of the consultant, if you want my opinion, but that's not a bad first step. 
that's got to be our first step anyway. Yeah, I mean, that, if, if if there's extra money and we could negotiate some of it to the 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 Ashford School, I think it might be best directed to getting the RFQs done and finding a good consultant. Well, technically, you have to publish an RFQ, which is a request for qualifications, and you list the work. And then no, you'll... I understand that, but once you figure out who that is and the town takes care of that, that money that we would find hopefully in the capital projects budget would go towards paying for that <laughs> person that's selected, I think. I, my, my guess is they're going to toss that right back over here <laughs> in mm -hmm. terms of writing up the request for qualifications and then go through a selection process. I, normally, you put out the request for qualifications, they come back, you get a series of firms that submit, you go through and you evaluate and grade out and then you select the best one and then you go into a negotiation for what you want them to do. That That's all Paul, what falls under your umbrella of expertise and all I'm saying guys, right. I feel on that I'm, I'm, I'm willing to share with everybody, trust me. I, I serve <laughs> on the project commission or committee with uh, Marion and I'm, I'll be lobbying heavily for some of that money to go towards what we're talking about, that's all I'm saying. So I, look, I think we made it some pretty good inroads on uh, about the things that we would like to see prioritized. Um, I can certainly put those in a list and get that list out to everybody um, in the next few days. Well, uh, if I could have if I could have something other than what I've got uh, by tomorrow, so I could take it to the board of education meeting tomorrow. I still have three budgets I have to do. Ah, come on, Jim. <laughs> You've got well, Mary, all that. more or less just said what had to be done in terms of sequence. We have to do the roof, simultaneously, simultaneously look at the possibility of adding solar, yes. and then looking at getting a, an RFQ done for a geothermal system that would, again, encompass replacing the boilers, right. replacing HVAC in terms of air conditioning, and basically killing a lot of birds with one stone. So if you want to take a general outline of what we talked about tonight, I think that would cover you. Okay. I agree. Replacing about the, the, the sprinklers and the alarm too. Yep, sprinklers are important. So I've got that down and I've got the roof and solar and the mechanical. And so you said that if we did the geothermal, that would uh, take care of replacing the boilers and what else? The oil tank. Oil tank and your air conditioning. Split mini hot split. Water. Hot water. Yeah, yeah, hot yeah. water. As I said, kill a lot of that birds. That would take care of our hot water as well? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're going to be a hero, Marion. Okay. Well, I, can, <laughs> I can take that to the Board of Ed tomorrow. Yeah. You know, if you, please bring back their feedback to the next meeting. So I will. Make sure that you know, we're in line with... Uh, with the board's thinking as well. So if, if they're if they're look if they look at that in a positive view, what is, would be our next step after that? Well, I think our next step is to have a conversation with the board of finance, which the I'm, board of finance, yeah. which I'm very which I'm very happy to do as long as I don't have another meeting that night. Yeah. And the so then we would get that RFQ would be after that. Yeah, after we would talk to the board of ed and the board of finance, and they're gung ho. Well, the, the town would publish the, the RFQ, then they would re, there would be a date for them to receive the RFQs, and then there would be a whole there would be a review process. Okay. Now, John, those okay. RFQs are done by state approved contractors, correct? The RFQs are going to be design professionals, going to be architects generally. But we would be looking for somebody the state or not. We would we would be looking for somebody with experience dealing with the state board of education. That, that's what I mean. Oh, oh yeah, the, the Department of Education they they have to have experience with them because um, it's a daunting process. <laughs> so, and I guess to help out the the town, is there a list of those published contractors available or those public those firms available? Typically, that's an interview question. Okay. I mean, I, I think you'll find that, you know, most of the people who are going to respond to the RFQ are people with significant experience in dealing with these matters. But you, you might get some that, you know, are just taking a shot in the dark. 
Um, there, generally, you're going to get people that have done schoolwork before because um, the the fees on schoolwork are not very high, but the responsibilities are just. Um, Okay. So they'll so they'll, they'll know the landmines in terms of filling out the documentation and the request as well. Oh yeah, yeah they'll 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 do us basically. We ask for a two stage. Generally, in the past, we asked for a two stage. We asked for them to show their qualifications and then separately submit a uh, okay. a fee proposal. So okay. it's a two step. You know, you want to make sure you're seeing someone that knows what they're doing, and then you look at and if they don't make the first part, if they don't look like they can do the work, then you don't bother looking at the fee. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to. Otherwise, you know, um, if you select someone that's really cheap but can't do the job, you're just going to be behind the eight ball your whole, right. whole project. And you're going to find a whole bunch of people that have done schoolwork in the state. Yeah, my, my experience with uh, the people doing schoolwork has generally been pretty good. Um, you know, I. I can tell you one town that I work in tried to do a roofing project with their town engineer uh, and it, it, it became a nightmare. Yeah. I, and eventually they ended up hiring an architectural firm with the right kind of experience to finalize the project because even, you know, even the plan requirements for the state board of education are very different than what you would submit uh, to the local building official for approval. <clears throat> very different, very different things. So the other thing that uh, we were asked to look at tonight, and I think you all got it earlier today by email from Chris Abikoff, is that uh, somebody is looking to lease a small space on the school roof for oh, yeah. for communications, and we've been asked to look at that <clears throat> and give any recommendations we might have back to the board of selectmen. I don't like the termination clause. <clears throat> oh, I. It also said they're going to tie into the T2 line that the school has. So is the school providing internet access to them? I think that is the case, yes. I, I The first thing I would do is I'd ask the town lawyer if that's okay. Providing uh, internet access free freely to uh, another entity. To a private entity. All right. Going into a campground, I. It's, that there, there's, I, the first thing I would look is for corporation council to sign off and say this is doable. Without, and that, yeah, you know, an and then and then or, decide if we want to or not. Yeah, I I, I agree one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But again, it's, we have um, to also have the lawyer look at the termination clause, which is very one sided. Well, I think the lawyer would have to look at the entire contract. Right. I well. This is we're sent. We're giving a private entity access to the school internet, um, which I think has serious um, potential yeah. for um, issues. And and I should talk to Scott about that too. Wouldn't Scott have a little say about coming into our internet? I mean, did you talk to Scott about it, Mike? No, I didn't. I just saw it tonight, just before this meeting. So I I'll, I'll touch base with him tomorrow and. Uh, See what he thinks. I, 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 I don't know. And that's another thing: putting something on our roof that we have to um, repair, anyways. Well, we don't have. Yeah, well, we that's have, all on them. Yeah. Um, well, I, I have, I have serious questions because dealing with uh, internet access and giving an outside entity access to my network, I've <laughs> the whole thing doesn't feel right to me. No, well, me neither. Access to our network. I mean, I thought it was just an extension of their tower. The way I read it, well, I what I saw was t a T two line connection. Yeah, you know a, more about that than I do, than John. Yeah, they're gonna they want to plug into the server. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we could save a, a discussion with the town attorney right here. Just say no. Right. Yep. No, I didn't. I didn't realize that. Taxpayers money to pay for a campground on uh, internet, right? Well, no. well, they're 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 offering four four thousand dollars or something for it, but forty two hundred dollars a year. No, it's not worth it. No, I it just doesn't That's make sense. To me. No, I don't think like in my network. I don't. I wouldn't allow anyone to use any part of it. Just no, no, 
No way. Not with <laughs> particularly kids involved. It's just that it's not a good recipe for anything. Nope. Okay, so we can pass on to Christine that no thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, we don't rec we don't recommend it for a variety of reasons. Do we need to vote on that? Got a reason. I I don't didn't make sense to me. Motion to vote uh, down the proposal regarding. Well, the, should we ask the lawyer to look at it first before we vote on this? I think it's a waste of good dollars to have the lawyer look at something he's going to say no to anyway. All right. What's this billable hours? Three hundred dollars an hour? Three hundred? I mean, it's a lot of money to say no. Right. <laughs> Motion to deny uh, the I, request. I'll second it. Any discussion? I think we just had it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Marion, I didn't hear you vote. Uh, I think I'm going to, um, what do you call it? Abstain. <laughs> Abstain. Abstain. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. So I, I you know, I'm, I don't like to vote on something I haven't read. Uh, understandable. So did everybody vote in favor of the motion with the exception of Marion? I did, yeah. Yes. yes so. yeah, okay. unless, you know, unless they come back with something that can convince me, it just didn't look like a good idea. I agree. It's a good opportunity for hacking. Yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else that uh, we need to hash over tonight? I just one one question. Do you think the school was looking to help kids work offline? Yeah, uh, I did. I, uh, that you cut out, John. I didn't hear the question. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering, does this come up because the school was trying to help kids in a certain area work offline? No, this this uh, was something that was forwarded. My understanding is this is something that was forwarded to the superintendent of schools from this company who has been engaged by Briarly Campground to provide some internet services. Oh, wow. And the, the superintendent, in his wisdom, thought that this is something that the Board of Selectmen should take a look at. So he forwarded it to Catherine Silversmith and she thought, you know, since the committee was meeting tonight, it would be good to get the committee to weigh in on what their thoughts were. Yeah, I, I don't think a town or a school should be a public provider. No, they have other ways to get internet. I, I agree 100%. All right, I just I'm just curious where it came from because it just seemed odd. Yeah, I I think it's a I think it's a location issue. Mm -hmm. And I think they did their, you know, the company did their homework and decided it was a good location with very little obstruction between it and the campground. Well, my other guess is they're having trouble getting a, a feed from uh, the phone companies. Either Frontier or uh, um, was it? Yeah, that that could well be. I think you know, just knowing how bad those people have been to me, <laughs> trying to get decent internet access, I've got to figure that they don't want to run a fiber line back to a major switch somewhere, which is what I, a two line would be. Yeah, and the camp, you know the campground is looking to solve a problem. And, and they hired somebody to solve that problem. And, you know, Ashford School just happens to be a good location. Yep. Well, you know, I'm not seeing anything here where it says that they want to use our internet. I see that they want to use our utilities. And they want to plug into. Where does it say they want to plug into our internet? It doesn't say the word internet. I believe it says T2 line. T2 line. Which is internet. That's your, that's your, that's your connection. That's your communications line connection. Where does, it, yes. where does it say that? I'm looking at it and I'm not seeing it. It says that it requires another port in the school's IT closet is the way they've got it worded. Yeah. Where, where, where it would mean that they want to connect onto our internet. Where does that say, what, what number is that? 
Well, it's right in the email that Christine put out. Cover note. Oh, I'm, I'm just reading the um, communication site agreement. So I didn't, guess I didn't read the internet. I mean, the email. It's in the body of her email. Oh, okay. So they're requiring oh, another port. Another port in our IT closet. Yeah, right. but a, a port is a port of part of your server. So that's, and it's, it says T2, that tells you the capability of the port. Yep. Which, Basically what they're saying, Mary, is like, it's like your neighbor saying, can I plug into your internet access? I bought the line. <laughs> I still say no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's a backdoor way for too many hackers to get into our system. Well, I also we, don't understand why a part-time camper would need that much internet access unless there are actually people living there full-time, which is always uh, been the best. Briley is actually approved for some year-round campsites. Yeah, but a year-round campsite isn't necessarily a year-round residence for students, is it? Uh, it's people who can't That's afford homes or rent. Hmm. People who can't afford homes or rent may be living at a campground. Okay, in, in COVID, I okay, I'll make, I'll take my Grinch hat off and make the exception, I guess. But. So for, for, some, sure, for some people, it's a lifestyle decision. If it has another port, I mean, it's not on a separate thing from ours. It would be. They have the they they would have the ability to get internet from satellite. It's not that they they have no options. And for the amount that they're willing to pay the town for the rental space on the roof, I believe that they they would be able to get through Usenet um, internet through the satellites. Well, if if you know other solutions that are open to them, I guess aren't really our concern. It's really whether or not we think this is a, a good idea as a revenue source for the town. Right. Well, it says here we would be ordering fiber optic internet service from the same provider you currently have installed there, Crown Castle. In your closet. They would simply provide us with another port on their switch in your IT closet. Uh, plugging into your system, Marion. And we would run an ethernet cable up to our radio on the roof. Yes. Which then once it gets to the campground, they might connect 30 people. So it's, but it would be their own internet, right? I mean, okay, I, no. I, I don't understand this kind of language. <laughs> no. basically, basically, you have a service coming into the school. And what they're saying is, well, we're going to tie off of your service. We're just going to order more capacity in your switch, mm -hmm. in your building. And then we're going to put the stuff on your roof to talk to the uh, campground. And my point would be, well, why don't you put your own switch cabinet on the telephone pole? You know, right. Yep. Okay. Just like, just like the cable on it. So I guess we don't really need to have a discussion. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Well, wait a minute. When's our next meeting? I don't remember. Uh, it was published. It was published. Oh, is it? I'll yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's in the minutes. Right. Yep. yep. It's, it's two weeks, I thought. Hold on. January 20th. Oh, okay. And the one in February is February 3rd. All right. And those okay. are the only time slots we've we've selected so far. 7.30 both? 7.30 on the 20th yes. and on the 3rd of February. And beyond that, we haven't set dates yet. Okay. Now, can I make a motion to adjourn? Yes, you can. You, you already did. Second. <laughs> Second. All right, we are so adjourned. All Thank right. you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye. 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 Have a good evening.